All right, everybody. I'm going to paint with you today. Normally, I run these as a time lapse, but today I'm actually going to um, paint the new Hammer Time Shark live so you can kind of see how I do it. A um, couple things you can need your brushes, your paint. I like, um, I just take an old cottage cheese thing and put water in it. You can tell I use it all the time. Um, any paper plate, you can use a scrap of paper, you can use a thing of cardboard, whatever you want, or even the container that the kit came in makes a great little um, paint mixing tool. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with the inside of this shark. And I'm going to play mostly with white, and then we're going to add a little bit of, we're going to pull these these colors out a little bit. So I'm just going to put some white right on the palette. I'm going to get my brush clean. Um, a paper towel is usually handy to have. I try not to contaminate my colors so that I can go back and use them again. So I'll get some out and put it on my paper plate and then do my color mixing right there. And then you close those back up and you can keep them really nice. So we're going to start on the inside of this shark and don't worry too much about like where his mouth is right here. Um, I'm going to start with a really light gray. So I take white, just mostly white, and I take just a touch of gray, just a little bit, and I mix it in the white so it's not nearly as dark as the gray that came in your kit, but it's still going to give you a little bit of shadow. And that might be even just a little too dark, so I'm just going to do this. Um, Allie, my daughter, looked up some information on some hammerhead sharks and thought it was really interesting that they have the ability, like humans, they're one of the rare animals who do this, to actually tan. So in case you didn't know that hammerheads can tan, they actually can tan. I'm just adding a little bit of color. You'll notice, see how I have a little white edge? I don't know if you can tell or not, but I don't completely fill the whole thing in. Um, and then I'm going to variegate it just, just a little bit by adding a little more gray. Mix that up. So now I have like a little deeper gray. I'll add that there in the shark fin. I'll add some over here. You can thin it out a little bit with water. It'll act like watercolor if you thin it out and paint once, once this other layer is dry, which is a really neat technique to try with acrylics. So that's pretty much that. I'm going to start to now use the full gray, and I didn't even clean my brush. You'll see I just kind of rub the other stuff in. It doesn't matter if it has a little bit of another color in. And go ahead and paint his fin. And you'll see I just went over an edge there. So not the end of the world, just kind of make it work. You can always fix something later if you go over your edge. Um, I should probably switch to a smaller brush. This is your round brush, so it's your little brush. It's got a nice little point, and it's going to be able to help you, well, it's going to help you get into these little edges, like this a little more. So I'm painting outside right now, it's beautiful, it's summertime, and um, anybody likes candles, my friend Juliet, who has Enchanted Sugar, has a new citronella candle. So I'm trying it out today for her. I'll show you. It looks like that. And um, it smells delicious. But so far the gnats, which are usually out here bugging me, have not come out to torment me. So we're testing it out to see if it works or not. Alright. 
So I added a little bit of gray. Now it might be fun for you to do some black in there. So I just get a little bit of water and like I was talking about earlier, if you thin that black paint, it almost starts acting like watercolor. So it's kind of loose. I'm going to do this fin right here and maybe a little in here. And just make it kind of interesting and so he's not just one black color. It's got some some interesting stuff going on. Because as the light plays on him, his colors are gonna look different. And this bottom fin right here, I'm gonna paint black. We'll leave this guy white right here. And now while I have the black, I can still see his mouth. I'm gonna go in. <laughs> Definitely use your thin point brush, but if you're really nervous about painting a straight line, um, go just get a Sharpie. And once the paint underneath is dry, you can just paint it with a Sharpie. It doesn't have to be something. You don't have to paint the whole thing. You can draw right on it. So um, don't ever hesitate to get out a Sharpie and do your little tiny lines because you'll have a lot more control than with a brush. It just takes a lot of practice sometimes to, to get a straight line with a brush. I know if I have too much coffee, I definitely can't get a straight line with a brush because all my lines will be jiggly. All right, I'm gonna touch up a couple of these little wrinkly things right here. Just give them a little little bit of interesting stuff and like the other fin, we'll just put a little line of black right under there. I'm not too worried about going out and outlining this whole thing. I'm just gonna kinda put a hint of stuff because then we're gonna go in and paint with blues and whites next. So I still have some white on my palette and we're going to start tackling this sun coming through. And the easiest way to start this is to kind of give a hint under the waterline is things underwater are going to tend to fuzz out and blend. But I want a little section of, of white up here so I can blend it into the baby blue. And then I'm going to get a new little section of my palette. Clean my brush out. So that I don't contaminate my color again. And I'm going to get some of each of these blues. So first we're going to scoop some of that out and close it up. And then we're going to scoop some of this phthalo blue which is a fantastic blue you ever wanted to um, mix a most awesome green, yellow, and phthalo blue, just a tiny little bit of it will make gorgeous, gorgeous greens. Okay, so we have a couple blues out, and I'm going to first go in here and we're going to we're going to kind of work in here and make a layer of almost like a lighter blue. Light's coming through. You see I just dropped a water drop on there. I swear it's not raining. We wish it would. But uh, not raining. Another little thing, I'm not going to do it right now, but um, definitely you should consider, I'll show you how to do it, is think about just wrapping your color right around the edge because you're going to set this on your little easel or even if you nail it, put a nail on the wall and hang it as a little tiny hang. Um, it's so nice to have your edge painted as well. So when you paint, just whatever color you're working on, whatever it's closest to, just wrap that color right around the edge. And 
paint away. We're going to come back over this in a little bit with a second layer just to make it more opaque. Look how thin it is where I drop that water on there. We'll definitely want that to dry and then we'll come back. In case you didn't know, hammerhead sharks give birth to live babies. I believe it's like 20 or 30 of them at a time. And what's really neat is they call them pups. So just like your dog having puppies, hammerhead sharks give birth to pups. All right. So that white is still a little bit, I mixed some white with this blue. What, we want it to kind of be streaky in here. So I'm just gonna put some fun little streaks and be a little loose with it. I'm not gonna worry too much about it. I'm gonna get some of that darker blue now and just kind of put some solid streaks in there. And you're gonna have to work fairly fast to do this kind of crazy streaky thing. And then, sure you have a clean brush. I'm almost out of white so I need to get some more of this. Just going to scoop some out. If you work under that little edge and then bring it down, wipe it on your paper towel before you get clean white. Again, bring it on the edge. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of lifting my brush up as I go over the color. So I drop it and I pull the weight up off of it as I go over that color. Notice if you don't clean your brush in between like I had just done, you end up picking up color. Sometimes that's fine. You may want to just be like that, but sometimes you're going to want it uh, to not blend. You add a little bit of water to it and scrub it a little. If you have some some rough edges, you can kind of work those out. See this side over here has dried a little bit. So I'm not gonna worry too much about it. Fresh paint. And add that in there. Maybe I'll just go in with some more blue. So I'm using my flat brush like this, see? Kind of pulling at it. I can add a few more little things like that. Gently blend it down in. It's going to help give that crazy illusion the color kind of blending into things. It's going to get darker, of course, the deeper the water is. So now I'm going in under here with this, and I can actually bring a little bit of my blue in here. Wipe it pull it down, see how you can even bring some white in, wipe it, bring some more white in, and again, you can just keep working on this as you want, see how I'm bringing some of the blue, and I like brush from the edge, and drag it up through. You can play with this. It's acrylic. If you make a mistake, paint over it. It's not the end of the world if you make a mistake and you need to touch something up. That's why I give you lots of paint. You can layer these and layer these. And if it gets too dark, then what you do is you let it dry. 
see I went over his belly there. I'll show you in a little bit how we can fix something like that. But if it gets too dark, let it dry, paint white, and then go back over it again. And occasionally you might throw your brush around. It's the funnest thing. Luckily I didn't hit my canvas. Again, if you want if you want your edges to be finished, then bring that up and then you can match around it as you go. See how that's not quite the right color, but then I'll bring some of that in. Do that. Wash my brush. Get some white, some baby blue. See, match up that up right there. Kind of wipe, go right over. And then a little more dark in there. Bring that in. Come over here, paint your edge. Same on this side. I said I wouldn't do it, but look at me, here I am. Painting those edges. Can't help it. It is kind of fun. It gives you such a nice finished edge. And uh it just looks so much better if somebody picks it up or they look at the side of it and you've got a nice little finished edge on your painting. Okay, we still have this section on top so I'm going to put a dark color because it's going to give it some nice contrast. So we're going to just use our dark blue up here and again um, this blue is it's just beautiful. It's absolutely amazing, but it is a little transparent. So you, just my dogs, like to add two layers of color to it. So we'll first put this on. We're gonna get some more because I'm pretty much out. And you'll see if you noticed. Did not use a lot of paint. So you have a lot of paint. You can get more canvases, try your fish on your own. Um, you can get some cardboard inside of your cereal boxes works great. You can put a white down and then draw a picture and paint on that. And that's like a really nice look. edge. And we're going to go in and put a little more light blue over that blue because like the other one it needs just a little more. Make it opaque so you can't see anything. Remember I dropped water on it so we're just going to go in here and touch that up a little. See how it just covers it? It's a nice covering edge. You can touch up any of your wackiness if you did anything wacky while you were painting. 
a shark. It's very unlikely that the water would not have a round ripple. So get rid of that. And then I'm going to go back in. I'm going to get more black again. We're going to put a little more layer of black and clean up. Do a little bit of clean up. Right here, I went over this fin. So we're just going to touch this up again. clean the black out of my brush. And the, the yogurt and cottage cheese containers are great because you can put some water in there and really throw that brush around in it to get it clean. So it's, an, it's a nice, nice clean surface. Um, I use them even with my watercolors. I really like to use it. All right, I came back in and mixed a whitish black again. I got it too dark, so I have to add some white. I'm just going to touch his belly up right in here. See how I had gone over that? So I'm just going to do that. And right here. I touched a little blue on his belly. And just enjoy it. I mean, if you want, if you say, oh, I want to paint a little more on that, or, you know, I'm going to try some different kind of things, and just go and enjoy painting. Look how, when you put a second layer over it, it just makes it more opaque. You, just you can see more brush strokes there's so many exciting things that that happen as you add paint to your painting like I noticed I missed a little section of blue along his back so I'm just gonna go in here and paint that and then right here a little wild and crazy in there I'm kind of like that I'll touch it up a little bit and then again, his belly come under here, pull some of this color down into there. Like this, it's not quite streaky enough. So we're gonna do some of that and then maybe grab some of the white. Sometimes I just mix it right on the canvas. That's okay too. There's really no wrong. Okay, so now, we're down to like the little itty bitty details. And you all have toothpicks in your kits, but I forgot to bring one out. So I am just gonna use the tip of my brush. Notice I cleaned it, I wiped it while it was wet so it was a tiny little point, and I dipped it right in the white. And I'm just gonna give him a little dot on each eye, and it's kind of magical when you add a dot. Suddenly they look more alive. So just added that little guy in there. While I have brush white on here, I'm just gonna add a little bit of white to where that water's shining through. And then we're gonna use a black mix. We're gonna give him some little dots for interest on his fins. So again, I wipe the brush Notice you can even take your fingers and run your hand like this over it so that you have a teeny tiny little tip if you have lost your toothpicks or painted outside and didn't bring them. So I dip it in and then I'm just going to do some teeny tiny little dots. You're going to do the same thing with your toothpick too. You're not going to um, take your time and just dip it in the paint and then Put some little tiny 
We're just going to give them chicken pox. I don't know why this makes it look so much more fun, but it does. I don't know if they even have these chicken pox things. But we're going to do that. Okay, so there he's got, this looks like salmon dots. Okay, so this is almost dry up at the top. I'm going to go ahead and paint another layer of this up at the top. That's more of this, it's called Thalo Blue. So what this color is. Okay, and if you're feeling really wild and daring, mix your blues so you got kind of a crazy blue mix, and you can even make it real watery, like draw some ripply little stuff in here. Something like that. Now, if you want to pretend that he is somewhere absolutely amazing. Let's say he's in a coral reef. You can also add some other stuff. You could paint a little octopus. You can also put a boat up in here. Um, but I'm going to show you, I talked earlier about how if you make a mistake you can let it dry and then paint white over it. The white I give you in your kit is a more opaque covering white. So coral kind of grows, if I remember this right, it can be kind of crazy and variegated shapes and we're just going to put some little funky shapes in this bottom corner. Maybe a couple down here. Maybe he's on the edge of the coral reef. It's just not terribly, terribly high, but we'll just go with this. Now this is going to take a little bit to dry because I put it on here pretty thick. And if you want your colors to really go kapow, then go ahead and wait till it dries and then add a second layer. And then once you do that, you can paint your bright colors. So we'll paint orange or yellow or something like that and add on top of it. But you could do a lot of fun things. You could put a little um, scuba diver in the corner or people with little fins or flippers. So you could paint something like that right in here if you wanted to show you Make their little feet go out like, you know. I'm going to have them swimming off the thing. That way I don't have to do their whole body little tiny scooby diver way in the back maybe I'll finish them over a wrap it around the person in here is there a scuba tank on their back have to be perfect. It just has to be the idea of it. So don't be afraid to to get wild and, and paint something crazy. It's pretty dry right now so we'll see what we can do. I think this is not quite ready but I'm gonna cheat it. Kind of lay some color on top so you can get the idea of what that does. I'm really laying this on thick so just if you do something like this, give it time to dry. It'll make your life easier. But if you do just paint thick and, and go into it like this, then um, again, <laughs> let it sit for a while before you play with it.